record. Okay, so we are now recording. So we'll have a record of this as well. I'm just going to take you through the, the web page that we set up for, for, for this meeting. It's, um, uh, it's on the, the blog. It's the top post on the dragons.com. And it's Mondragon Cymru, a vision for a post-carbon world. And it, it, it really struck, strikes me, and I don't know how much it struck you, but the, the COVID-19 reality and it, all this you know, uh, quarantine that we've had to do is there's no going back to the world that was before. The world that was before is what created this problem in the first place. And we really have to understand that deeply and understand that, again, is that for 25 years, we've invested in permaculture and, and cooperatives as a response to a collapse, which I've always known was coming. I don't know about you. I did a degree in sustainable development. 1984, we were told development isn't sustainable. Hmm. So I've had to wrestle with that paradox. And that's why I created Sector 39. And it's why we've got involved in co-ops and all of this. It's the only thing that made sense. Okay. So um, I wrote this invitation letter. It, you'll see it on the... Um, uh, on, on the web page, and, and it really is an, it's an, invitation, it's an invitation letter to anybody who feels it's, it's directed at them, because they are, um, you know, they're well, well, they're really welcome. Oh, so we've got a new person, perhaps he's not got their mic muted. I get a bit of echo there, anyway. Um, if you feel you're welcome to this conversation, then you're welcome to this conversation. This is inclusive, and 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 it's because co-ops are inclusive. Yeah, and um, I've just posted. Again, so we have common reference points. We all kind of coming from, from a, the same point of understanding is, I've, I've posted this lecture from Richard Wolf. Um, that's fantastic. Is that Trevor Lack Farm arriving? That's so exciting to have you here. Uh, Trevor Lack Farm, we've got everyone on mute. Uh, we're just gonna run through our presentation and then we'll take some sort of points of clarification as, as we get into it. And we're gonna try and get this done in an hour. So I, I really thank again everybody for their time and for, for, for bearing with us, this is, this is so important. and creates a, a really unique opportunity. Um, and um, so back to common reference points. People might not know exactly what co-ops are or where the kind of sort of socialist social ideas, idealism went. And I think this is the best lecture I've come across yet on, on that reality is Professor Richard Wolf. And, and I couldn't recommend this more strongly to people as a kind of a bigger background to actually understanding what co-ops are, but also that this, it, it was his presentation that gave me the germ of the idea for this kind of co-op, sort of bigger model that we're working on. So I do invite you to look, it is quite hard sums. Uh, it might take more than one lesson to really understand what he's saying, but he does spell it out really beautifully and very powerfully and simply. Second video that I kind of put on the sort of playlist is about um, how coming out of pandemics, and there have been many of pandemics before, have shaped a new era of history. Um, and that, um, you know, the, the bubonic plague, the Black Death in the 14th century was the end of the feudal system. It, it actually allowed significant social change to happen, significant social change to happen. And I want us to be on the leading edge of shaping that social change because that's what permaculture, that's what co-ops, we exist in that space. Yeah. We're there about innovating, we're there about pushing forward. Um, yeah. And, um, and we come from this wonderful heritage of, of co-ops, which has always been about, about the advancing the social economy and, and pushing forward on, you know, um, in terms of our own collective ambition and what we can achieve. Third, the third video I posted is when we do the reboot of the economy, and that's the thing that we're all supposed to be talking about now is how do we, uh, you know, recreate our livelihoods and, and jobs and, and, and all that sort of stuff is, yeah. you know, start paying our rent again, all these things is how are we going to do it? we're going to have to do it within a post-transition climate change paris agreement mindset yeah there's no going back and there's no like everybody's noticed you know when you stop polluting the air the pollution yeah. goes away and everybody's enjoying the benefits of this cleaner water clearer air but there's also a an absolutely um essential thing that people need to rem remember is that the climate change the carbon dioxide that we've pumped out through burning carbon fossil fuels it's still going to stick around for 50 years, longer, 100 years. Is Some of the pollution is going to fall out the sky, but the long-term climate affecting stuff is still there and it's going to remain there. It's unfolding. Yeah. And if we think COVID-19 is, a, is, is a, uh, an impact on our lives, wait till you see the global climate unraveling and um, wait, you, wait, wait, you know, 
suddenly we're supposed to be paying attention to science, but they are not paying attention to the science of climate change. So all of that is good background watching to make sure that we're all kind of coming in from the same, on the same tangent. It might be worth mentioning Robert Owen as well. well. He's in there. Yeah. I'm coming. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I saw that we, uh, all, um, Yossi and I got to go to Cultivate uh, the other day for a meeting. We took a few photos of going around. Because within the proposal, we propose launching a horticulture worker co-op. That's part of what we want to propose. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to give an insight into what that might look like. So we want to take on a three or four acre piece of land. And the slideshow is what we did in Newtown um, with a similar size piece of land, be it in a, in a different context. Um, so the proposal, just moving down this webpage, about Mondragon Cymru, um, the background's in the, um, in the content, but Mondragon are the world's, the fourth biggest Spanish company and the world's biggest cooperative. And, and, and they, they, they create a really powerful example and thing that we perhaps could aspire to in a small localized way. But how else do you think Mondragon got started? Hmm. Um, they're from the Basque country in Spain. And after the collapse of the Franco regime and, and the modernization of Spain and entering the EU, the Basque were waiting for all that, you know, where's all that investment coming from? We're waiting their turn. And of course they realized, because they're out on the periphery, they, was, they were never going to get it. Mm. Um, so they started meeting their own needs from local resources. You know, that's pure permaculture, really. And creating institutions that represented the democratic and economic ambitions of the community. So I, I think there's a model there for us to learn from, and, and I'm going to be touching on that too. So that's again why the sort of background information. Parallels to Wales, maybe. Yeah, yeah, really. In terms parallels. of investment. Absolutely. And the Richard Wolfe lecture also explores the Mondragon phenomenon, which is um, well worth, um, well worth uh, I, I, I just tuning in on. So um, Yossi mentioned uh, Robert Owen. And um, this, this now here is this, this download here, Cooperative History and Principles. If you, after this or when, whenever you, you want to, if you click that audio, that will stream the audio and it gives a narration to the slideshow which you can download. And it explains the history of co-ops and the fact that the first, the originator of the very first mutual company came from Newtown, came from just down the road. Mm. And it's bizarrely, coincidentally, it's his birthday today. Robert Owen is 239 or something like that today, or 49, I think he is, um, which is just wonderful. So happy birthday, Robert. And that, that's, that's yeah, kind of wonderful. Still going strong. Um, and his ideas were what formed the seven principles of cooperation. And that's what define us as a co-op. Okay. And that's what binds us all together. So how, to the degree to which you understand and know this is that's our job as a cop is to educate you and bring you into this mindset of this please principles of cooperation so there you go and then this down the second download is the presentation i'm now going to take you through so everything's there all the information is is there hopefully so that we can have a completely transparent and understanding conversation to um uh, uh yeah understand what, what this is all about okay so again thanks for thanks for bearing with us so far um, so this is our main presentation. This is the thing you can download at the end. And in, it's in some bits I'll skate over, but this includes the, the business plan for, um, for Dragons, past, sort of present and future. And it, it's to say, it's okay, let, let, let's, let's, let's go, let's jump into this. So first slide is why are we proposing this? Why are we insisting that we have this big meeting? Well, hopefully I think I've already said this. I think these are extraordinary times. I don't think we just, you know, make a few fine tunings. I think we realise that no, this is our big jump forward. This is when the presentation isn't on screen. Do you want to have it on screen, or we've we got to look at ourselves? Um. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, how do we turn our camera on? Please, you'll see. You should be able to see the presentation and me, though. I think. No, I can see your web page and you. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I've meant to um, new share. Uh, PDF. This one. Okay. Let's see what he does. Can you see the right, in five seconds, he'll mute me again. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You want if ever. Um, sorry. Um, was that Rosie? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hi, so Hi it, Steve. It, Hi. Love you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's good to have people muted when, when they think uh, that's on. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just getting into this. I've never done Zoom before. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, you so mute me away. If you, me or away. you can, you can self-mute. Otherwise, at the time... I'll shut up. I'll shut up, yeah. Uh, otherwise, any background... The camera moves around. Uh, uh, otherwise, any background noise then brings your camera live, you see. So it's good to be okay. muted. But that's... that's Yossi's supposed to be doing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, big breath. Okay, again, oh, thanks. This is it. This is the meat of the, the meat of the thing. So how do you need to find those ones? Or you can do that, that one. Yeah. Anyone, you can scroll down. Yeah. Oh, okay, why are we doing this now? Now, now is our chance to make our sort of, um, make our pitch, if you like, and, and, and to sort of, Make our presence felt, I think, because um, I say pe everybody, people are looking for looking for ways forward, and I, I, I'm telling you, so many people have got in touch with us recently, exactly on this subject. So I think we've got we've put ourselves in this position too, I think, to um, to lead on this to a degree. Now, um, I'll talk a little bit about the specifics of our co-op because it contextualizes it in a sort of a real way, but there's. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of people are looking at it from their own perspectives. But we, as Dragons, um, we're funded in part by a, a mortgage. About 70% of the value of our house is a mortgage, and about 30% is private investors who believe in our vision. And we also are answerable to them because they've invested in us. And we have to return interest to them. So they're also stakeholders in Dragons and people that we feel a responsibility to. Now, when we, when we first saw this property and it came on the market, we were really interested by its kind of uniqueness in that it's, it's both a um, home and a business. Mm. And it gives opportunity for living and for working. And this sort of live work thing, it, being a member of a housing co-op gives you control over your own housing supply and creates an ethical landlord, which is you. So that's a, like, um, it's like the ideal sort of situation potentially. And, 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 for uh, and working. yeah, and if we can do that for working as well, and we can create incomes and meaningful th uh, livelihoods for ourselves, also that speak to the community that's around us, then, you know, that, so that was always the vision for Dragons. And um, we've got this, yeah, lovely place that's sort of um, actually complicated to work out a business plan for, because it's got three bedrooms, but they're, they're all, they, they, one feeds off another, and one's, above another room where you don't really have that much privacy and it's taken us a little while to find out how best to use the space and what we also we began on the 1st of august uh 2015 so we're just coming up to our fifth birthday and at the beginning of the cult we also wrote a five-year business plan which is what we gave to the bank and to the people who invested in this and so this is also all of this comes into our re-evaluation of that business plan from five years ago and looking forward and asking ourselves what it is, um, you know, what are we going to do? What are our ambitions going forward? And, um, um, oh, you're still getting, I think it's, I think it's Rosie again. Well, why do we keep going? I'm meeting on anyway. Um, so yes, we based it on a best set of assumptions at the beginning, actually, of which have kind of, you know, changed and move on. And we have to evaluate those slightly too going forward. So, um, these are in the original business plans that we have and I might skip over these a little bit in the meeting but obviously they're there as the download and this is for us to discuss in detail as a co-op Friday afternoon going forward but we've had um because we've got, we've got potential of these sort of these three rooms in the house and then we've got um the shop space and at the beginning our target we had to make was um a thousand to fifty pounds per month and we did it by dividing the space in the formula above then things in the second year changed slightly. Um, we had two tents in the house, but then Grace moved in with me as my partner. So I shared my space with her. So I kind of like sublet my living space, if you like. Um, and that generated um, a part rent. Mm -hmm. And that worked really well. The can't really work best like that when it was sort of two, two plus two and a third rents coming in for people and both the shop and then the office upstairs for sector 39 were rented both for 150 so on the residential side we had two and two thirds tenants paying 900 and on the other side we had sort of two half tenants paying 300 
bank, like almost a rent between them. And that generated £1,200 a year, uh, a month, which covers all of our costs and returns a small surplus for reinvestment into the co-op, which is what you're supposed to do. So that's worked great. And then um, currently we moved into a three people in the house situation, which we'd had a, a lean period. So that's actually it generated a small surplus. We've been earning 13.90 a month with the two, um, with the shop and the office next door. Mm. Um, but it hasn't really worked as a setup because we don't really have three bedrooms. Mm. So it's worked as a, as a temporary thing. And the tenant number three, who has a bedroom number three, has given notice to quit and he'll be leaving by the 1st of August. 1st of August, interesting, is the date when we have to write a new business plan looking forward. And we need to, to it needs to cover the you know, sort of new budget target. And the new budget target is about, um, what is it? 1290. When we look forward at this, and this is what I sort of put the red flag up the other day, is I suddenly realized, well, we can't, how can we write a new business plan when we have no idea what the future holds? We've now only got two tenants between them paying 760. We don't know what the situation is the shop, it's currently closed. Um, it's paid rent till the end of May, but we've, you know, unknowns remain there. Office, sector 39, well, it was paying 150 pounds a month, but that went down to 100 um, by J January because they were running uh, fewer projects. And the only off the actually job offer that we currently have on the books is for me to go to Ethiopia, which then leaves Yossi alone in the house with a shop that's potentially closed. So that's not like a healthy situation. And Yossi has health issues, M MS as well, so we don't want him alone, a home alone in a house either. So. This is sort of why we go, okay, look, we're gonna to have to revisit the whole plan. And again is, you know, apologize to everybody for just doing this this way, but I don't know how else to do it because there's so many other people have a relationship to dragons and there's so many other people are part of how we're going to solve this problem by us all working together. So this is, this is it. So I wrote to the bank and I said, hey, Triodos Bank, we're, we're, we're worrying a little bit. We don't quite know how we're gonna get out of this. You know, what, we don't know what to expect. And he said, well, that's actually congratulated us for looking forward and, and being thoughtful on that matter. They said, yeah, we can whatever, do go on to repayment only and, and, and interest only and things like that. So we, there are possibilities, but um, it's only kicking the can down the road. We need to come up with something that fully, you know, hits, that, that is, a, is a plan forward. Okay, so um, we're going to create two, we've created two business plan scenarios. And that's what I want us to talk about within our co-op, maybe Friday afternoon onwards, is we've either got to, we have to stay with two people in the house and we bring in more money from the shop side from the, and the shop and office side so that there's an equality between the three tenants. We hit our 1290 target. And, but also we recognize that we're not gonna jump to that straight away. That would take some investment and planning and we're putting together plans for how we might achieve that. And that's the conversation that we want to have going forward with the shop team um, or it struck us that we have another option is that we we've always been aware that this office upstairs where we are now if it would need to be invested in because it needs to be insulated it's not insulated and it hasn't had the right uh, facilities but there could also be a rentable space yeah. and that could become a residential space and then if we wanted but and actually displace the office yeah. so then we thought perhaps a holding position or a transition position or an alternative is if the shop and office space were to be, were to, if we stacked those two functions together, the first third of the shop remains the shop with all the uh, displays as it is. And then we have the office in the middle and the, the, the coffee bar can still operate as it is. And the reality is that the shop's mainly open at the weekend and the office is mainly during the week. So actually it means that we could be open all the time or we could, you know, we could, you know, but not to presuppose anything. These are conversations that we need to have, um, you know, between those various stakeholders. So but somehow we've either got to bring in more money through the shop by investing in the shop, or we've got to share the shop space, stack it up with the office so that we can get, bring a third tenant into the house. Right. So that's the framework that I want us to talk about to be able to come up with our next proposals. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but before we get bogged down on what detail is, I want to talk and, and celebrate much more of this bigger thing that we're all part of. And that's why also we've got these other stakeholders here watching today is 
we're all part of a cooperative ecosystem. Yeah. We are part of an active, interconnected community. And we've all been working on this for, well, 25 years, 30 years, um, you know, our lives kind of thing. So let's, I want to explore that. And then this again is sort of invites out to those people who might feel that they're on the periphery of this, but make them feel that they understand how I visualize that we all work together. So little bit of co-op history, little bit of how we got here history is, um, I, I committed, I, in 1994, due to climate emergency, I committed to the idea that we were going to have a collapse that we needed to explore what, opportunity, what alternatives there might be. And that the, the co-ops thing, especially for me coming without money, without any capital, without, uh, I was self-employed, didn't have a job, is that, that seemed the only way that we'd be able to sort of take control of our own destiny, sort of our first rural housing co-op, learn about permaculture, get to actually learn it by doing it. And we began that on the 1st of August, 1995. So that will be 25 years ago on the same day that Dragon is, is, has its fifth birthday. And I tell you, it took us two years of dreaming and research, and then another year of hard work to bring about the first co-op. It wasn't easy at all. Uh, we didn't really know anything, how to do it, didn't know how to write a business plan. I didn't know anything about co-ops. I went to Radical Roots meetings for three years to learn how, how to do it all, and you know, blah, 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 blah. But it came, it came about. And it also actually made us the first, um, one of the first, uh, social enterprises in Britain to be invested in by Triodos Bank. Interesting um, uh, thing, sort of the biggest uh, ethical bank working in, in Britain today. Um, through history, association, friendship, common goals, um, um, uh, uh, Penelan was able um, years later to become permanent housing co op. And that was a lot easier. That didn't take three years, it took, I don't know, six months or something because we had already existing relationships, inside knowledge of how to do it, and a, a deep sort of trust, a mutual trust. So that, that enabled then the second sort of housing co-op to come from the same source, from the same set of ideas, the same model rules, same aspirations. Yeah. And, and remembering that the initial aspiration always was to kind of to change the world, to lead, to do something ambitious, right. not just to have cheap housing in common. We're always trying to do more than that. Right. And now we're here in this COVID-19 crisis, global reboot. We've got to own this space. We've got to own that a little bit more. Yeah. So Town of Ron Housing Co-op came from exactly the same roots, the same process, the same associations. And actually that was facilitated by, out of, out of Chicken Shack, I started to create this enterprise called Sector 39. And it, it, it has, two functions when I think about it. One was to communicate education about permaculture and housing co-ops and about cooperatives, because those are the tools of the trade, if you like. Mm -hmm. And and the other one was to help develop new enterprises to take take chances, take risks and establish new companies. And it was an enormous risk to establish Chicken Shack, I have to say, right at the beginning. We only could get um oh we're not gonna get bumped oh, in ten minutes. Um, um We'll have to re-establish the meeting if we do, so we'll just, just be a pain. Um, we could only get a 50% mortgage originally on Chicken Shack. So it was an awful lot of work to bring in that investment. Anyway, so off we go, we, we, we did it. And the process of that then helped sort of join together a training network that then supported those co-ops. Right. And bearing in mind, to be successful as a co-op, we have to continually invest in education to make it work. Um, so the next thing that happened is, um, I wanted to take the to become a more serious enterprise and we won investment from the Robert Owen Credit Union. So just five, six years ago, we got uh, 10,000 pounds of investment. Um, and also, I just want to, yeah, okay, let me just name check Silver Housing. I know they're here um, watching, is one of many people actually who've come to us over the years who've asked us about what's this co-op thing? We're inspired your way of example. How do you do it? How do you achieve that? Okay. And, um, We've, you know, give away as much information and support as we can. And we've helped seed that to many other co-ops, but Silver Housing are ones that we're currently in discussion with, and we're really excited by what they're trying to establish in uh, Llanidloes, just down the road from us. And then, um, so the next thing is then, so this education and support and project support function of Sector 39 has just been growing and growing. Not only have we won more invest investment from Robert Owen Community Bank in Newtown, we've also won investment from the Arkleton Trust uh, Fund to create the Sector 39 Academy 
which is how we teach and share about permaculture. Yeah. And again, is I've started to realize that sector 39 should be thinking and aspiring to separate out those two functions, okay. the project development function and the training and development, the training function, because they're essentially kind of different. And that the sector 39 is a limited company, so it can take risks because the, the risk is limited by its shareholders. Its shareholders is me, and in the future to be Gail as well, who has now his intensity. So we can kind of in a, we create a center for innovation that we can help you know, develop these kind of aspirations. And the Sector 39 Academy becomes the, the, the hub, the repository for, for training, and which has now got this dimension that we're training hundreds of on the edge subsistence farmers in East Africa. So directly from the energies within Dragons Co-op and what's going on in this building, we're supporting really hundreds of things. And now we're starting to redesign schools in Rwanda and all this. Super exciting. Yeah. Um, so then, of course, Dragons fits into this universe really well. And of course, there's a two-way relationship because Dragons is also a tenant of Sector 39. Yeah. So it helps like recycle money and put investment back into our co-op. You can see how it makes it all stronger. Um, and then, you know, We've also got relationships with people on the outside of our ecosystem. Let's just say Trevlack Farm, for example, because I, I know they're listening too. And um, they're part of our universe. We ran five PDCs mm -hmm. at Trevlack Farm. We were like an atom bomb of ideas going off in their space. And um, it's created a sort of an ongoing process which has helped transform the farm. And, and we're so proud to be part of that. We're so pleased to be part of that and working with Sue and Rich and all of the PDCs and all of the students, it's, it's, we've created another kind of universe of its own. And yeah. Trevor Lack have, and it, it troubled us at the time though, we thought about it, and remember conversations that we had was, well, we're investing all of this energy into building a relationship to a, a, a privately owned farm, it's not yeah. us. So how does that work? What's that, you know, what's that, how does that relationship, connection. yeah, connection. And then we realized, well, Tre Trevor Lack have their own community interest company which does, if you like, contains their community interest function, which is separate from the ownership of a family-owned farm. So there's a different, there's different relationships here again. Yeah. So I think this has really informed me to think about how to think about all of this. Now, the next thing that's coming onto our map is community interest company at Pentagon. We've wanted land forever. We've wanted to be able to, for the, 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 the Permaculture Academy to have a place to work with. We'd love to create our own jobs for ourselves, for our teenagers, for our whatever, uh, you know. And, and if this, 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 this land holding is going to become a, a thing in October, and what we want to do is build a relationship with it. And the first question to us is, how do you do that? How do you have a relationship with a piece of land? Well, okay, so we've got a proposal for that. It's all in here, and I'm trying to unpack all of this because a lot there's a lot of stuff to it. Also, hey, Darren, Paris House. Um, Darren comes along. He's a bit like uh, Trevlack Farm in the sense of he's out there on the edge of the ecosystem, monitoring how he builds links into that. How does he relate to us? Darren's bought the old post office. He wants to do food retail, and again, totally fits within the permaculture ecosystem. Another sector 39 graduate is hmm. Interesting, wouldn't you say? Where all of these things start to link together. So the blue, I've just popped in there. You'll notice there's a slight change here. That, that is, so what's the connection? How do we make all of these things relate to each other in a way which is inclusive, it's reinforcing, but also is, it removes, we, we can't have risk of contagion. Let's say if one co-op went belly, belly up, it, it can't affect the others. But if one co-op's in surplus and has more than it needs, then it, the whole ecosystem needs to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the idea, this secondary co-op is, that's our Mondragons. That's the thing that I want to propose, really. It's a big picture thing. And I'm going to invite the Wales Cooperative Society to invest into that and to help us achieve that so that um, we're all stronger. We're all operating within a universe that is... Um, mutually supportive because we're going to go through peaks and troughs and all sorts of challenges is guaranteed because of we know of what's happening right now so if I insert into that diagram the the, the red now what well, these are three new worker co-ops one supports the function of education and it sits between 639 and all these other elements one supports this function of the horticulture a worker co-op which could perhaps take on a field at the Pentagon of CIC, turn that into a horticulture project, create jobs and livelihoods for that. It needs a legal, uh, legal structure, it needs a form that it can relate okay. to, 
and can take time leases and contracts and stuff. And then the same strikes me if the shop needs to be, that's the retail function, that's what it's doing. You know, can we convene that within the same ecosystem with the same values? So we're all driving with the same sort of tools, if you like. Right. And then they all sit within this wider ecosystem, which um, has all sorts of properties of resilience because it's, it's interconnected. The worker corps sit within it. They're surrounded by the sort of supporting um, uh, uh, other elements. And the whole thing is strengthened because we're sharing knowledge and we're continually investing into education, sharing best practice and getting better at doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even if one element was to fail, that the whole system is untainted by that. Right. And actually, so I looked at the scenarios, what would happen if dragons went bust and is, and we realized that we couldn't go forward anymore is, well, most, what would happen is we'd have to put it onto the market, give three months notice, and try and sell it for what we paid for it. If we did that, then we'd pay off the mortgage or what was left of it, and it would be we'd pay off loan stockholders that wanted that loan stock back. Whatever was left, the equity would go default to permanent housing co-op because right. that's in our rules. So the value that we've created would not be lost from the ecosystem. Stay it's just reinvested. Yeah. So imagine if we were to kind of do that more. Yeah, I've got a camera on. Do Can't that. See me. Uh, that? Sorry, I just heard a random voice then. But anyway, okay. Um, so I'm going to stop adding arrows at this point and say <laughs> this is where you work out where you oh, fit yeah. in with your aspirations, your organization. I haven't put everybody in here. This diagram would get horribly complicated. But start to think about how things interrelate, okay? And the possibilities of but the of blue that. circle is the ecosystem. Is the ecosystem. And then we all sit to think about which element within that ecosystem do we want to, do we relate to and how do we relate to them? Yeah. And, and between it, we start to, ch to reinvest surpluses and... and, and we're uh, autonomous. Yes. So this is my final kind of groovy diagram. I think um, <laughs> um, that we get to the big spider diagram is we're also, is, we're all informed by permaculture, which is the National UK Association. We've created enterprise um, uh, group, uh, community groups like Brace, that help us coordinate on climate action. Yeah. We've great, wonderful community assets like Kai Bodva, yeah. uh, the Institute That's Garden. True. That's our new lovely logo, which we're working on. And then also is not to forget Workhouse. It's always been a sort of bedrock of innovation yeah. and stuff in Club Rutland. And they've invited, even today, they've got back in touch with us and say, look guys, the Green Hub, the bigger vision, the bigger picture, how, you know, how, we've got to make it work because they're not going to be doing gigs and uh, festivals anytime soon, I, I guess. That's I mean, again, no. I'm not saying I know what happened. What I do know is we're into a period of uncertainty where we don't know what's going to happen. And, and by actively networking with us and being sort of committing, doubling down on our commitments to permaculture, to cooperatives, to the principles, understand the value of our network. Yeah. And, and also by pitching us at the Wales Co-op Society is 